Hello everyone and welcome to Magma Rages episode 33. With me I have Zemok and Pandemonia as usual and we have all just returned from Rage. A massive expo happening in Johannesburg. Uh, Zemok and I traveled up from Cape Town and Pandemonia took the 45 minute drive from uh, Pretoria. So, <laughs> Pandemonia, do you, do you want to give the, the viewers a little um, bit of a... Uh, education on what Rage is and your thoughts on the on Rage this year. So Rage is the one of the, basically the biggest gaming and sort of technology expo in I would I would say uh, definitely South Africa. I would even say that like probably the whole of Africa. It's basically the closest thing most you know South Africans are going to get to E3 or GamesCon. You know, it's obviously nowhere near as big as those, but for us, you know, it's a chance to see the new technology, try out the new games. And basically get together and meet friends, you know, which I think, I mean, like, you, you know, That's you guys coming about, up. Man. That's what it's all about. And, uh, like, this year specifically was really cool because uh, with the ESL Africa finals, there were, like, Algerian teams and Algerian players. Uh, so it was really, you know, really awesome to have other Africans essentially come being at Rage. Yeah. So how did you find the event as a whole? I mean, you've been to Rage for uh, quite a few of the last few years, so... How do you, how has the event maybe grown in the last few years, uh, other than just the, the ESL stuff? So, like, because I've been, like, most of the, for the past few years, I have been at Rage. I've been exceptionally busy, whether it's competing or this year casting. That I, I haven't really, you know, paid too much attention uh, with regards to the actual, you know, stands and who's there and who's not there. So, you know, so, <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I mean, it, it constantly looks like it's getting bigger. I mean, a couple of years ago, I remember... There wasn't a, there wasn't the whole wing. I don't know if you went to the wing where there's all like essentially the flea markety sort of stuff. Or the, the, uh, the, was the, the blue wing conference center. Yeah, that whole section has basically only really been there for like the past year or two, I think. Yeah, that's before. a really cool section. They've got all like the like the small stuff, like a lot of arty things there, like homemade uh, like creations yeah. and, cups and I don't know necklaces oh, okay. and whatnot. Before Is that where the, a few like, years ago, that was, was on the main floor. They used yeah. to be on the main floor. So the fact that they have expanded. Yeah, uh, yeah. With, <laughs> with, I, like, I, was one, I was wondering where you got that. Uh, I imagine, you know, with some of the new things like the ESL taking up a lot of space, they might have had to move some of that, you know, that kind of stuff somewhere else. So, yeah, I mean, it obviously has really expanded. Um, Zamark, how, how did you find the event? Um, I mean, my experience, I think, was very different to your guys. Um, I was competing downstairs at the VSGC LAN. Uh, I was competing there in the Hostel event. Um, but I had a lot of downtime, uh, largely because we ran quite a bit ahead of schedule, and also I was knocked out <clears throat> relatively early, I'd say. Um, more on that later. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, it was, it was a really cool event. I mean, I'm uh, like, I play a whole bunch of games, not just Hearthstone, uh, as I'm sure both of you do. But so I got to experience, uh, I really felt I experienced the expert to its fullest. Um, I watched some of the new Assassin's Creed gameplay. They had a whole stand there. I didn't actually play, but I went and watched the game. It's absolutely stunning. Um, I saw they had a Far Cry booth, a Call of Duty booth for the new. These are new games that are coming out that haven't actually been released yet. Uh, so I got to experience those as well, which was really cool. Uh, did quite a bit of shopping. Uh, first time actually that I bought anything at Rage last year. I kind of just looked around, but this year I bought a lot of stuff from that flea market section that um, that Dale was talking about. One of them is this Hearthstone. It's quite yeah. cool. Um, yeah, it was a it was a very very cool uh, cool experience, and uh, yeah, it was just just a really an awesome weekend, hanging out with everyone. You know, uh, coming up to Joburg and seeing everyone who stays there, and I kind of just hang out with like minded people. It's always just such an awesome experience. Uh, and especially seeing the stuff um, that ESL put up with the Hearthstone Tavern and the big screen for the CS and stuff. Uh, I'm not even a CSGO player, but just that whole environment there, uh, I'm more than happy to watch. It's very inviting, very entertaining, and uh, just extremely high production value. Awesome stuff to watch. Yeah. Overall, it was an amazing experience for me. Really enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, uh, much like Pandemonia, I also spent a lot of my time around there because it was also obviously casting the, the ESL stuff. But... Also on the Saturday, I kind of had a lot of time to walk around, uh, catch up with a friend of mine that lives in the area. So that was also really cool. You know, we went around and um, played some of the, the games that were around there, mostly like some of the, the old arcade games they had set up. It was like uh, King of Fighters 2004, old stuff like that. Some of the old fighting games that like my friend was really a big fan of. So mostly I watched him crush people because I didn't <coughs> want to play those because uh, I'd get crushed. Because the people playing those, they're like, <laughs> they literally sit there all day at the expo and just like, 
like uh, camp the fighting game machine and like you know, rotate <laughs> really? out like you know winner stays on kind of thing it's it's just uh, quite interesting to see that that community a little bit more especially in south africa where we don't really experience the, the fighting game community as much here so you know that that was quite interesting uh i also thought you know i didn't get much time to get hands-on with any of the newer game code but i i did uh, some shopping very expensive shopping <laughs> but some shopping mostly for like uh, hardware stuff so yeah Hopefully, they're going to be able to start streaming some other stuff like PUBG soon, once that's all up and running. But yeah, I mean, I thought the event was really cool. It was actually my first time at Rage. Like, I've been wanting to go for a very long time, since I was still in, like, school. I always wanted to go up to, like, the Nag land and land there, because, well, like, back in those days, I used to go landing a lot. Uh, so, you know, I always <laughs> wanted to go up and land there. And it was, it was cool seeing the land, um, obviously. Uh, now I don't really land as much, and it, it was much nicer being able to go back to the hotel. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, so you mentioned VSGC, uh, Zemok. Do you want to give us a little bit of a rundown about uh, what VSGC is uh, in terms of Hearthstone and how the event went overall? Sure. Well, um, VSGC is basically um, it's a big tournament that's hosted by uh, the VS Gaming uh, organization. I guess uh, I don't really know what they're called. I don't think it stands for anything. But anyway, uh, basically they're partnered with Telcom, and they uh, throughout the year there's a series of ways you can qualify for this tournament, and then it takes place at um, Rage every year. So uh, formerly known as DGC. Uh, Pandemonia is actually our 2015 DGC champion. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So the way it worked this year is. Uh, at the beginning of the year, there were two community cups, basically, you had to win uh, three uh, tournaments in a row, basically, um, and then the top two players were qualified uh, for a spot at VSGC, and there were two of these, and so the four players qualified through there. And then there's also the uh, uh, VS Gaming divisions and ladder. For those of you who don't know, basically, it's a, it's basically a roster and a ladder system where basically you 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 have to top a ladder and then you move into a division and you have to kind of work your way up the divisions and then uh, the top division is Premier Division and the top four players in Premier Division also qualified for a spot at BSGC. And then there was another way you could qualify that was through playoffs. I don't really know anything about that, so I can't say it. But anyway, uh, another eight spots, I think, were through playoffs. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, what happened was a lot of players got tied up with other commitments. Um, you two, for example, were uh, casting at ESL. Um, some players just couldn't get to the event. I mean, Joburg isn't uh, very easy to get to some people for some uh, to for some people, uh, you know, leave and whatnot. Uh, and what ended up happening was uh, just if you were in a division, you ended up uh, being able to go because so many people dropped out. But overall, it was still a very fun event, and uh, you know, some good some good games definitely were played. Uh, well done to Alan Gascoon, uh, aka All Too Easy, that's his <laughs> in game at the moment at the moment because he might change it any day. Right now, we don't know. Uh, yeah. But yeah, he won DGC actually the second year in a row. Um, he went 12-0 because he went he he won six games straight last year and six games uh, six matches straight this year. Yeah. Um, that's just absolutely incredible. Uh, second place was Francois. I I think it's Mart. I don't want to uh, butcher his surname. Well, I don't know how you pronounce the surname. Muton. Muton. Sorry, I I used to say Mutton, and that's something that's not there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, Franco uh, Maton, uh, aka Fafa. So also well done to him. And then third place was uh, Gareth Phillips, uh, also known as uh, Philo. Uh, all three players uh, did very well. Yep. Uh, but yeah, just uh, emphasis on uh, Alan winning for the second year in a row. Both years coming through the winners bracket, uh, just very well, uh, very well performed by him. Yeah, he's actually been a returning guest on, on the podcast. So uh, any long-time viewers will probably know him as well. Usually mostly for his arena advice, as that's kind of where he spends most of his time. Uh, he actually also came top 100 again on the arena rankings for September. I think about 71 or something something around there. Yeah, his average was like 7,6. Yeah, so, so uh, a, good, good. a good you know September and beginning of October for him, definitely. Yeah, I'm sure he's happy. Yeah, and, and his then, uh, travels from Newcastle paid off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then the other major event that was happening was the ESL African Championships. So, I mean, we've covered it quite a lot on this podcast, you know, in our esports section, usually the, the uh, group stage that we've been talking about. But this was the uh, top four playoffs for season two. And, you know, there was uh, $4,500 for first and basically... A, kind of halving that all the way down so it was like 2200 for second 
uh, so on and so on. And we had two Algerian players and two South African players. And in the end, we managed, we ended up with both the South African players in the final. Um, Exia finished, Exia from Algeria finished fourth. Salion finished third, uh, also from Algeria. And then Menlin from South Africa finished second. And Scythe from South Africa was our grand champion. Uh, and uh, he came through the loser's bracket, actually. That was... Yeah. Uh, it's, it's very difficult. Uh, for those who don't know, basically, uh, in a double elimination tournament, if you lose one of the games, you have to... If you, and you make it to the final, you have to actually win two games in a row because technically when the person from the winner's bracket final loses their first game, they mm. like are moving into the loser's bracket in a way. Uh, yeah. And so it's a, it's a big deal if you if you win actually coming from the loser's bracket. It's a huge congrats to, to Adam uh, or Scythe. Well, yeah, it, it is actually the same as what happened with the player, the season one finals, uh, where expert summer one also after coming from the loser bracket. So, so far that's been working out for the players that actually do drop down to the loser <laughs> bracket uh, for whatever reason. For uh, Scythe, I think, you know, we, we spoke to him afterwards and um, we kind of could see with his lineup that largely he'd prepared for the meta very well. He had a very control heavy lineup to beat uh, what he was expecting to be a relatively aggro heavy um you know meta with uh, only four people in the tournament you can sometimes make a very specific read on the meta and if it goes badly you it could uh turn out pretty badly for you like uh maybe his first season went a little bit worse where he only came third in the top after the top four uh, on the top four playoffs but this time it really worked out for him and his lineup really worked you know the only real series where it kind of uh, failed them a little bit was in the winner bracket final versus Menlin, where he actually managed to lose that one. But he managed to then defeat Menlin twice again in that grand final. So it all worked out for him in the end. And after topping the group stage for both seasons, one and two, uh, you could definitely say he's a deserved winner. He's performed very well throughout the ESL African Championships. So, you know, a big congratulations to him. Uh, Panamonia, do you have any thoughts on, you know, uh, joining us on the casting desk and uh, sort of, I suppose, one of your first events actually casting live at the event, right? Uh, well, I mean, I've did cast some smaller previous events, but I mean, this is definitely the biggest uh, by far. So it was really quite, you know, it was quite nerve-wracking, but also, you know, quite a lot of fun actually just to be on the desk with, you know, you, you as well as Penguin, uh, you know, just to chat there. And, you know, actually realize how quickly time goes when you're just talking about Hearthstone. You know, you're just talking about Hearthstone and, oh, they finished. Oh, it's home time. Oh, you know, the whole weekend's gone. So, you know, for me, it just went by really quickly. (laughs) This is what happens when you don't walk around the expo. The weekend just disappears. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so. What did you do on Saturday? I'm so confused. (laughs) Well, Saturday, many walked around and also just chatted with people. And then also that also time just disappears. You know, I would check out the VSGC a bit, walk around. But basically, yeah, it all went by so quickly. Yeah, actually, yeah, I was watching CS go, and they yeah, kind okay. of get so them to explain yeah. to me. Yeah, because yeah. like for those that like, if you weren't enraged, maybe you don't know, but the ESL Hearthstone took place on Friday, and then the finals were on on Sunday. So they had a lot of sun. Uh, I believe there were some interviews and stuff that had to be done on Saturday, but there there was yeah. a lot of time on Saturday for the ESL guys. So I was a little bit confused at the start, and Dale was like, I mean, sorry, Pandemonia was like, I didn't get a chance to walk around and stuff. But I, I'm happy you did. I'm happy you did. <laughs> Yeah, so it was obviously just really great to see the ESL, you know, coming to Africa. Uh, We also had the admins flying out. It was actually really great to meet, you know, some of the admins we've been dealing with, Andre and Soren, uh, and Martin, one of the higher ups at uh, ESL that also traveled down. Uh, So it was really great to meet them and, you know, to get them to see sort of uh, African esports. And, you know, I think. ESL Africa kind of bringing together the the different parts of Africa and allowing them to compete against each other is really important for improving like the quality of uh, African esports across the scene. You know, uh, for the CS in particular, it was kind of a big storyline of who was going to be you know how were the the North African teams going to fare against the South African teams because they don't get to compete against each other you know week in week out like the Hearthstone players do. So I think there's a lot of really cool storylines and yeah, I mean there was also. Uh, as we mentioned in the the last episode, you know, uh, I think I'm pretty sure Penguin fangirled a bit uh, about Pansy coming down as well <laughs> to cast the the CS:GO. You know, having some she's international she's talent. Uh, Sorry, uh, uh, she's a well-known CS:GO caster, like international CS:GO caster that was there casting yeah. the the finals. 
yeah, so it was, you know, a really big event from uh, Quest and ESL, and it was really, ex like, exciting and uh, I'd say pretty successful from, at least from what it looked like on our side. Uh, there was yeah. also, on the Saturday, you know, on the set that we had, that really cool um, tavern kind of set, you know, with the uh, the big wall and the, the fireplace, uh, there was, or well, using that set as a backdrop, there was also a fireside gathering on the Saturday for people to join in. Uh, it was good to see that that fireside was really well attended. You know, there was quite a few people, uh, so many people, in fact, that they had to kind of change the format last minute to make sure <laughs> that they could accommodate it in terms of time. So, yeah, I mean, that, that was really uh, awesome to see. You know, just uh, having more of these kind of fireside events in South Africa is really great. And obviously, Rage is like, a particularly good place to have one simply because you have all the uh, traffic walking by i know you actually did compete in the fireside uh at least because you had some time or a fair bit of time in between your games on the uh saturday how did that go zemok or how was the uh, how did you find the fireside as a whole i mean the, the fireside as a whole was just a, was a really cool event um i personally i mean i'm not gonna say i didn't try i did try with the decks i took but i i took uh, i mean i took quest mage uh, it was kind of just, uh, you know, I, it's nice to just sit and, and go to an event where you can compete and play good Hearthstone, but also just, you know, play around with decks that you that you wouldn't take in the most serious, um, in the most serious of, uh, what's the word? Um, uh, I want to say in the most serious of, uh, like, tournaments, right? Sure. And it was, a, it was nice to, to have a chance to try and pilot uh, decks like the Quest Mage um, at a high level, but unfortunately it didn't go as well as I'd hoped. Um, I got knocked out in the second round, uh, single Elam, so unfortunately that was that. Uh, but it was, it was a really well attended event and, and really well run. Thank you to uh, Lara, um, our resident uh, innkeeper here in South Africa. Yeah. Uh, thank you for running that event. Uh, I'm sure it couldn't have been uh, the easiest thing in the world, especially with the amount of people that we had, which is, uh, as you said, very well attended, especially for a Hostin event. And, and I hope that that just really helps grow the Hostin scene. Uh, things like that are really what we need in South Africa, and um, it, it's really just the things with these kind of, uh, you know, these firesides with the great set, you know, um, very appealing for passerby, um, passerbys and, and whatnot. It's it's mm. really just helping grow the scene, and it's it's very cool to see. So it was a it was a nice event, and I think Dale, uh, sorry, Pandemonia has the has the top three positions from that fireside. Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I. The thing I noticed when I came back and saw we only saw four people left is I didn't actually know any of those four people that were playing. Uh, so, you know, that's also a good thing, the Fireside giving some newer players an opportunity. Uh, the prize money was quite decent as well. It was, you know, 10,000 Rand prize money, 5,000 for first, uh, and then 3,000 for second, and 2,000 for third, I think. And it was Ethic that managed to take away the, the first place there. Uh, with Fridge coming in second and No Scope coming in third, so congrats to them. Fridge is a uh, is a slightly more known player than the other two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I mean, I, I've never I'd never met him before then, so I didn't. Oh, yeah, I, yeah. When when seeing the players at the table, I had no idea who they were. Oh, yeah. yeah, I okay. mean. Uh, so, but yeah, I know it's, it's. I mean, everyone has to start, right? Uh, yeah. It's it's great to see new names come in. You people will be like, oh no, I got bitten by a, a noob. No, it's not a noob. It's just you just don't know him yet. You know what I mean? And and you yeah. don't know how good anyone is there. Haven't had an opportunity to prove himself. We were all new at one point. Uh, yeah. No one knew any of us. It's it's natural and it's good to see uh, new names coming to the scene. Yeah, and there's a lot of new names in this uh, bracket. Just looking through it as well, so that's uh, pretty cool to see as well. So yeah, you know, big we shout out to those uh, organizers and yeah, hopefully those players you know that have gotten a taste of victory now and a taste of that <laughs> uh, sweet sweet prize money come back for some more tournaments. In 60 to 90 days. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and speaking of firesides, there's some pretty exciting news that was announced uh, today, I think. Um, there is going to be a new Warlock hero that's going to be coming for uh, players that attend a Hollow's End fireside gathering. So, Pandemony, do you want to give us a quick rundown on how exactly this is going to work? So, basically, from what I understand and from what has been announced, uh, Basically, if you attend a, a fireside in the month of, well, actually, it starts in October, but they say it will continue basically indefinitely. Mm. And basically, you attend a fireside, and once if you attend a sanctioned fireside that has an innkeeper and a tavern, you'll have an, you have an option when you can bring your brawl to actually 
do what they call a fire side tavern brawl. And these are actually quite a lot of fun. I've you know I've played a few of them, and basically they like basically put a spin on the tavern brawl with like unique and crazy rules. So last month uh, September was the Lich King, where you 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 could basically the whole tavern took down the Lich King who had a really large amount of health with pre-constructed decks. Uh, this month's one, I believe, is actually like a three-on-three. Three. Yeah, that's, uh, that's basically, what, yeah. Basically, you play, uh, but you, this all happens on one device. So basically, what happens is <laughs> you play against a friend. Then, when one of, when let's say you kill the other person, they then have a chance to discover the second player's deck, basically, and then they then play with that one. And it's kind of like a tag team in a way. And then, obviously, I think the first to get two wins wins the series essentially wins the team thing hmm. do you get the card back just for i mean sorry the hero just for um participating in the tavern ball for it uh, uh, from what has been announced it, it appears that's the way it's going to be okay and, and when did you say the start date of this is sorry just in case anybody missed it uh it's it's, it's, it's something it's about early october uh let me actually just find the exact uh uh, it I says it will be that. available with the release of the 9.2 patch. Uh, so, uh, as usual with Blizzard patches, uh, you'll know when it's out, basically. You'll have <laughs> like, to update your Hearthstone. Yes, no, uh, but I mean, I mean, like uh, they yeah. don't, they don't yeah, tend they to give you that much it. specific dates for patches. Yeah. Uh, sometimes, I, I mean, only ever for balance patches do they tell you, and even then, it's anyone's guess as to when. On that day, oh, it started on October 17. It says okay. here in the post. Okay. So what All we're right. saying is, if, if there's a fireside near you uh, and it's past October the 17th or is October 17th, uh, just try try attend it. It's you get a really cool hero by the looks of things, um, and have some fun and see some friends. Yeah, and you also get to play a cool tavern brawl. You know, something that's only going to be available by attending tav uh, a fireside. So. That's pretty cool. And, you know, it's also a great motivation for um, innkeepers that have maybe been a bit dormant for a while or, you know, not maybe had a good reason to host a, a fireside. Well, this is a pretty good reason, right? It's a lot of incentive for uh, to get players along and also for innkeepers to establish their taverns, you know, with these kind of uh, unique symbols and borders and whatnot that we see for <laughs> Uh, creating your own tavern logo. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, um, and then there's some other news which I know particularly excites Pandemonia there and his love of shiny things. Um, <laughs> there, um, Mike Danaeus has kind of had his shared his thoughts a bit with PC Gamer and. Um, I think one of the things that came out of this was uh, the uh, the golden pack that would be coming out. No, was no, that, was was that not out of this? Oh, okay. uh, I don't know. Well, what do you want to talk about? The golden pack or the, the golden PC pack? Game? Oh, okay. I thought that was uh, basically. Okay. Sorry. If you uh, if you subscribe to Twitch Prime, uh, basically what they've been doing is every month they release a bunch of different rewards. So you, subs you obviously you, you become a, a premium member of Twitch, but then you get uh, extra items in a variety of games. So they've had things for Hearthstone, for Overwatch, for Quake Champions, and even PUBG, I believe, they, you know, you get some extra yeah. in-game items. And so for the month of November, you're going to get a Golden Classic Pack. And yeah! what basically... <laughs> but, so, okay, so what, it, all that means is it's a normal pack, just everything is gold. So, uh, you know, this is a chance for people to open some really sick Golden Legendaries. And you know yes. you're gonna see you're gonna see Reddit or Facebook filled with posts of people you know opening two or three like golden legendaries or something stupid. Yep, it's gonna uh, be the those humble brag posts of look I got three, le like two legendaries and an epic in my freaking pack. I guarantee you we will see the counter thread of oh, I'm free to play. This is unfair. Give me free golden I need, packs. I need more and, golden packs. Yeah. And I'm mm. gonna be posting. Look at my golden hungry angry chickens, as well as my golden wisp. <laughs> I believe it follows the normal pack rules, so you have the normal chance of getting like golden commons, yeah. I think. And they said that the pity timer doesn't uh, apply to it, so you there's like no guarantee legend or something in your ah, first. So like, you you can't like game it until you open enough packs without 
uh, legendary, and then you just yeah. try and save for that pack. Yeah. But I, I assume the normal <laughs> pack rules of like, if you already own the legendary, you're not likely as likely to get it. Uh, no, because it's blind. golden. Or, or, well, okay. if you own the gold legend, you won't get it. But if you okay. own if you own the legend normal, you can still get it in golden. Because okay, they okay, the okay. pack rules works so that uh, they don't overlap. Okay, that okay, sense. that's good. Because I don't want really to get nat pack or gold or any of the bad ones <laughs> but why? that I don't already that have. Oh, yeah, I forgot to say, I, I packed uh, Tink Master at last. <laughs> <laughs> Mac pack or golden looks so awesome. Okay, but. I'd like, I'd prefer to have golden cards that I can play. Nat Pagel is bay. He is playable. Most playable card. <laughs> yes, he has this she seeds. Uh, someone, I think someone played him in. Uh, okay. Red <laughs> uh, yes. On that ridiculous note, uh, we're actually going to end the episode there. Um, Wait, what? We'll... What about Choose Your Champion? Oh, right. The Choose Your Champion. Yeah. I totally right. forgot so about that. So I can't that. forget about Choose Your Champion. Okay, fine, Choose. fine, fine. So, that was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. That was, I was just I just wanted to stop talking about competitive Nat Pago because that's that's silly. Um, so I mean you could put anything in the Razakas Priest and it'll probably be fine, right? Uh, anyway, uh, so the Choose Your Champion is going to be happening again for you know picking who you think is going to win or at least win enough games at the HCT uh, Summer Championships. Yeah, okay, summer. Mm -hmm. I got the season In right. Las Vegas? Yeah, uh, in Las Vegas. Um... Not HTC Bahamas, don't be fooled. No, <laughs> <laughs> not Bahamas. Uh, do you want to give us a, a rundown of how the, the pack selection works? Uh, or, the, or how choosing your champion works and how it actually influences the number of packs you get? For viewers that don't know. So basically... You... Uh, oh. I, I, was, I was meaning uh, Zamark, sorry. Very good. Oh. Uh, and Zamok seems to have disappeared. So, uh, Panamonia, do you want to just give us the rundown instead? <laughs> so basically, uh, what Blizzard have done, sort of as kind of a way to give back to the community and also get the community a bit engaged. When there's these big ACT uh, uh, seasonal events, they have a, a pick a, a champion, and basically, no matter which champion you pick, you guaranteed one pack, and then. If they get out of the group stage, their group stage, you get another pack. And then if they then make, because other group stages means they're in the top eight. Then if they make it to the top four, you get another pack. And then if they make the final, you get another pack. So basically, you can make a maximum of four packs. So basically, when you go, uh, the fi the final, the two finalists make give you the maximum number of packs. So when it when, once the final's being decided, it doesn't actually matter who wins. From a pack point of view, they both give maximum packs. So, generally, you know, some people like to choose uh, the their hero. Uh, I mean, their champion, just you know, the person they like the most or their favorite player. You know, then some people most li uh, like Dub like to then, and a, and a lot of pro players like to you know actually systematically, you know, go through deck lists, go through the brackets, and you know try and work out you know from a statistics point of view who is the best one to pick with regards to li their lineup, their lineups, as well as even their individual deck tech choices. Uh, you can explain a bit more about that to us. Yeah, so, you know, you, you can actually look once the deck lists have all been performed, uh, uh, all been revealed, <laughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. You can they actually kind of look at them and figure out, you know, how theoretically the matchups should go between the players to determine who's going to have the best percentage chances of progressing from their group and then winning the game after that and then winning the game <laughs> after that obviously the further along you go the more susceptible you are to anyone changing so you know if you think uh player a is not likely to progress from their group and but player b is very likely or player c is very likely to progress from their group and they do but in fact, player A still progresses from their group and matches up against player C, then that can really mess like how you thought things were going to line up. You know, player A could have a much more favorable lineup against player C, but not against their group. So that's why you didn't expect them to get out of the group, but they do well if they get out of the group. So yeah, it gets uh, rather confusing, but uh, you know, in general, you kind of want to pick the player that uh, has the combination between a good lineup and a good competitive history. That's that's kind of what I, I feel is is very often the the optimal way of picking. And uh, speaking of which, do you guys have any favorites uh, from for choosing your champion, or have you maybe already picked your champions? 
Well, uh, I have picked my champion already. Uh, I was debating quite long and hard between Pavel and Purple. Uh, Pavel is just one of the most consistent players in, I, I want to say Hearthstone history, even though we've, yeah, in Hearthstone history, I, I almost want to say he's just, uh, in the past just a uh, year or so, he's just really proved how consistent he is. He's won countless tournaments um, uh, and just uh, high finishes at the, uh, this past year, even qualifying for the uh, winter championships back at the beginning of the year, uh, that's a big deal in itself. You know, winning the world championships, winning a few tournaments after that, and then qualifying for the winter championships to potentially qualify for the world championships again. Uh, and now we see his back here trying uh, yet again. Um, so I almost voted for Pavel. Uh, his lineup's good. He's a good player. We know that he's consistent and uh, babbling book into polymorph. Um, so <laughs> easy, easy wins. No, but I, I ended up voting for purple. Uh, Purple's a player that I've followed for some time. I've kind of, uh, I only, I didn't, I wasn't playing Hearthstone when he had a lot of his success, but I went back and I've, I've watched a lot of his old games. He's a player that's really interested me. Um, you know, he's, he's uh, one of the big innovators in the, in the pro scene, uh, often coming up with uh, interesting decks and tech choices, actually coming up with um, Frozen's uh, Water Warrior that he used to qualify for um, winter champs back in the beginning of the year as well. Uh, also uh, seen as a, one of the one of the uh, almost uh, I want, I'm just going to say one you know really one of the big innovators in the Hearthstone scene and uh, I believe he has both as you said um, that good competitive history and also a, a very good player. Uh, what did you say that yeah a good player in himself so oh yeah a, uh, a good lineup I mean a good sorry yeah. good lineup yeah yeah and and you can see the the card the choice he's made is a very interesting deck some of his uh, deck choices uh, but I trust in purple so purple is where my vote has gone to. Uh, and you, Pandemonia? Uh, so, funny enough, I actually decided to go with Pavel in the end. Oh, okay. And uh, basically, Purple was actually one of the other considerations because, like, I looked at it from the point of, uh, you know, lineups. And basically, like, uh, I believe Purple, Pavel, Orange, and Yay Tears all actually have, in terms of deck archetypes, the exact same lineup. Uh, now, obviously, their individual lists vary. But then, what I, you know, my sort of system was so that they kind of had the lineup I liked, <laughs> you know, and then basically looked at their group and what the other players in the group had in, with regards to counting them. So because those four lineups that 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 Purple, Pavel, uh, Yates, and Orange all have token shaming, I basically looked for groups that had like Control Warlock in, and I was like, okay, I'm not going to pick that guy. <laughs> okay. And did but Purple and that. Orange have? other players in their groups with uh, those kind of counter shaman decks uh so purple uh, is in a group where i think jason Zhao and uya are both being control warlock oh they, i mean jason Zhao is just the control <laughs> player right um, <laughs> can't expect anything and, less from it and then the thing is in group c where uh orange and yetez are is the fact that both of them are in that same group oh and you don't want to take the 50 50. so yeah exactly so it could be the case of they're both good players but it you know, if they do play each other, it's obviously, you know, because they sit, their lineups are very similar, it's kind of a coin flip, you know? So yeah. that's why I decided to go with Pavel in the end, was kind of my, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think not to be, or not to underrate any of the real the, the players there, but I mean, Pavel also makes sense because honestly, his group looks like one of the easier ones. Um, you know, uh, Baiz or whatever, the Chinese player is, you know, not yeah. any nowhere near as well known as the other three Chinese players that are at least not to us in the Western scene. Uh, Koko Sasa it was kind of unknown even to the Korean scene, you know, when he <laughs> managed to qualify. So definitely a big surprise there. And Empanizado, you know, uh, one of the the Mexican HTG players, kind of only just, you know, making the the first Mexican to make any kind of uh, HCT, you know, tournament. So definitely i think going to be possibly struggling under pressure so i mean in that way you know pavel definitely the player with the most storied history there and that definitely you know uh helps him kind of stick out in his group as well whereas you know purple he has uh Uya, who performed really well with his really interesting lineup at the in the apac uh prelims and jason zhao who is kind of just a standout for consistent performance in china so um I, I you know i mean amicus the the european representative in that um group is also a lot less well known 
than you know a lot of the other players. But I, I think you know for me, I, I really haven't had a chance to look at the the deck lists yet. So I will once again go through them and decide. Uh, but I mean, it's probably going to come down to between purple, uh, orange, Pavel, and surrender. I feel like those are the four standout players to me just on skill alone. Uh, and you know, it's very difficult, I suppose, to pick from Group C. Uh, for Pandemonia, it was because Yates and Orange had the same list. For me, it's because Surrender and Orange are in the same group. Like I, even Amiga Zero. I would <laughs> almost never pick Yates to be quite honest, even if I thought his lineup was hands down the best, because I know nothing about him. And uh, so far, we've had the champions usually being people that are pretty well known. You know, Stanadachi uh, and then Hoy. You know, these are players that prove the the, you know, just. Being that, like, at the very, very top of your game uh, in these kind of tournaments can make a difference. So, you know, for those kind of reasons, I'd also want to go with uh, a more consistent sort of well-known name. So, yeah, I mean, those are kind of the, the standouts, I think, uh, if you, if any of the viewers want to just kind of take a guess and, you know, put their, uh, nail their flag to the mast of any one of these players. Uh, but, yeah, so that is probably the only... Although the last thing we really need to discuss, uh, the clo voting closes on October the 11th. So that's pretty soon uh, in two days time, basically, depending on where you live. Uh, it's 11.59 uh, PDT, which is, I think, Pacific Daylight Time or something like that. I have no idea. Yeah. Um, but, you know, so I'd be I'd definitely encourage you to vote especially in the next uh, day and not do what i kind of have done for the last two events and that's forget to vote in time <laughs> uh so yeah don't don't do that uh you know just pick one of those four players uh if you want um you can either uh you know you can go with any of them or any of uh, other suggestions or you can just guess you know even if you, i think even worst case scenario you'll always get one pack yeah yeah and the packs usually the, the come a week after the event. No clue, and you do want to maybe try like almost. I don't want to say guarantee because there's never a guarantee in Hearthstone, but I think the absolute safest best is probably just Pebble. Yeah, it probably is. Um, but yeah, <laughs> that's what everyone said. The, 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 was it the last one, the previous one with Tice, and yeah. he got knocked no, out that first was, round. That's just uninformed people. Uninformed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it's also like the group makeup that really sticks out to me for Pebble. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Uh, that is all we have for episode 33 of Magma Rages. Uh, I think we all need some much-needed rest now after Rage. Yeah. I know I'm still <laughs> pretty exhausted after having to fly back to Cape Town early this morning. So uh, if you want to find us to ask us any more questions about Rage or uh, maybe some more advice for uh, choosing your champion or if you want to find us, uh, uh, find us to get some more info about VSGC or ESL African Championships or even just firesides that are happening in our, uh, the areas, you can find us on Twitter. You can find Pandemonia uh, at Pandemonia ZA. That's with a three and a zero. Uh, <laughs> in, case, in case you're not watching on the uh, on YouTube. And for Zamok, it's uh, at Zamok underscore HS. Uh, much simpler one there. And for myself, it's hey, at uh, Dib uh, underscore gaming. So, yeah. So you can find us on Twitter, uh, and then also please, you, you can comment on YouTube as well, and we can answer your questions there. Uh, and also please uh, subscribe, uh, like, and uh, follow if you're watching on Twitch as well. So thanks a lot, everyone. Uh, cheerio. Cheers.